For Action News, I'm Anna Samovska. 2013 may be behind us, but those infamous health scares of the year are not. And just like Groundhog Day, they come up again and again and again. What we here at Action do best is debunk those fears and talk about the real scientific evidence behind the claims. Here's your countdown of the top 13 unfounded health scares of 2013. At number 13, acrylamide. Scientists reported finding it in carbohydrate-containing foods cooked at high temperatures, like broiling or frying. It's completely harmless, but it gets no love from the FDA and the media that are advising people to avoid broiling or frying their foods, claiming the formation has been linked to cancer in animal studies. You can't use rodent studies to translate into humans and say that just because something at a certain dose causes Cancer in a rodent doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually harmful to humans. And in this case, this chemical is really not harmful to humans. If you really want to avoid foods with rodent carcinogens in them, good luck because there's really not much that you're going to be able to eat. So, I mean, the FDA should really start focusing on some real problems instead of trying to unnecessarily scare the public into avoiding certain foods. CNN medical correspondent Dr. Sanjay Gupta aired a segment he probably should have reconsidered, the five foods you should never eat, and for no good reason at all. Strawberries for the pesticides, white chocolate for the lack of antioxidants, sprouts for their subject to bacteria, canned tomatoes for the BPA, and swordfish for the high mercury content. What's really upsetting is that by keeping on repeating EWG's message that if you say something often enough, people will start to believe it. And by promulgating these scares by EWG, you increase the possibility that people will be worried about foods that they really don't need to be worried about. The next time you're wondering why your energy drink appears a bit cloudy, you can thank brominated vegetable oil, a completely harmless substance. It's used as an emulsifier in citrus-flavored sodas. Most recently, Pepsi was targeted to stop using it in Gatorade because the compound is often confused as being a flame retardant. The assumption is false. So the reason that people confuse flame retardants and brominated vegetable oils is because both contain bromine atoms. However, just because both do contain bromine atoms doesn't mean that they're pharmacologically related. This is completely inaccurate. So this confusion is really just generated by activist groups who want to scare the public into thinking that there's something dangerous in their drinks. And they actually do know the science behind brominated flame retardants, brominated vegetable oil. They know there's a difference, but they're just using the fact that there's some sort of relationship between the words in both both things to make it seem like they're the same. Talk show host Dr. Mehmet Oz reveals some test results on several brands of apple juice containing high levels of arsenic, warning parents about the dangers it poses to children. But the FDA quickly responded and sharply, accusing Dr. Oz of inflating the facts and failing to separate organic arsenic, a naturally occurring and harmless chemical, from inorganic arsenic found in apple juice and later rice. First of all, it's inorganic arsenic that is a problem, not the organic variety. And in, in the initial tests of arsenic and apple juice, people really didn't separate the two. It's true that arsenic can be a poison. Everybody knows that. Um, but it's not true that very low levels are going to be threatening. The levels of arsenic found in either of these foods is minuscule. And the idea that these could be health-threatening is really without a strong scientific basis. Fracking has been in widespread use and as drilling increased in the Northeast, the anti-fracking hysteria movement began. The mythology about fracking implies dangerous procedures and water contamination. Thanks to Josh Fox's movie Gasland a few years ago, the mythology and antagonism to uh, fracking has uh, grown, uh, uh, it's become a huge popular movement. Most of the people opposed to it, however, have no idea uh, what the actual technology means. They're just afraid of water contamination and health effects. However, as of now, there is no evidence of documented health effects from fracking as far as water contamination goes or air pollution or any such thing. An anti-nuclear power group known for stirring up phony scares outdid themselves in 2013, this time scaring the people of Huntsville, Alabama. 
The scare, an increase in infant mortality due to a nearby nuclear plant, except there was no such increase. The group claimed infant mortality rose significantly following the plant opening, but one look at the numbers shows quite the inconsistency. This is done by a group that's well known for using phony numbers to generate scares, and I've written about them in the past. And if you take a look at the numbers and the trends they're talking about, they have nothing to do with each other. For a few five-year periods, it seems to go up, and then it goes down, and then it stays the same, and then it goes up again. They are using random numbers, selecting the ones that make their case, ignoring the other ones. It gets in the news, and it scares everybody, and it works. HPV, the human papillomavirus, is the most common sexually transmitted disease, and it could be avoidable. All thanks to a three-dose HPV vaccine available for adolescent girls and women. And yet only 35% of teenage girls have completed all three doses. The reason? Some believe the vaccine to be unsafe and ineffective. Most recently, talk show host Katie Couric was scolded by scientists after her show aired an irresponsible report on the risks of the vaccine. I'm not exactly sure what Katie Kerr expected when she chose to present such a biased view about vaccine. I mean, she had one parent who's claiming that her child died from getting the vaccine, and she has one expert who's saying that the vaccine is actually not effective. But that's really not the case. The vaccine is completely safe, and it's very effective, and there's really no reason why kids should not be getting all three doses of the HPV vaccine. Really what it comes down to is that we have this cancer vaccine and we really should be using it. Number six, phthalates. They're chemicals used in products, mostly toys, to make the products more flexible. And yet they've been pegged endocrine disruptors by environmentalists. Recently, companies like Procter & Gamble and Walmart are succumbing to the hype, banning chemicals from their products. And yet decades of research and use of these chemicals indicate they're safe and don't pose a threat to humans. I think they've reached a business decision that rather than fight you know, these various groups that pop up here and there arguing against chemical X, Y, or Z, and it's always something different, um, just to take it out. And then they get high marks from the environmental or the consumer group, and everybody's happy. Number five, artificial sweeteners also took a hit when a survey of studies showed the product makes people gain weight, not lose it. Supposedly, the compound interferes with the body's learned responses to sweetness, since the sweet taste is no longer linked to caloric content. The paper got widespread attention, and for all the wrong reasons. The problem is that this has been looked at in obese people, and so you could be mixing up a correlational relationship with a causal relationship. It may be that people who are overweight or obese are more likely to use artificial sweeteners because they're trying, they think, to cut calories. There have been well-controlled studies that demonstrate when people substitute, for example, an artificially sweetened soda for their typical intake of regular soda, that they do, in fact, cut calories and lose weight. Now, that's not a given. There's nothing magic about artificial sweeteners. You don't use them and then automatically lose weight. And if you do what many people do, which is overcompensate and say to themselves, well, I had a diet soda, so therefore I can have an extra cookie or two or three or maybe five, that's not going to help you lose weight. At number four, we're calling this one Lipstick on a Pig, a very flawed and misleading pig study backed by the organic food industry claimed genetically modified food caused severe damage to animal stomachs. In the study, half of the pigs ate a non-GMO diet, while the other half were fed GMO, soy, and corn. The numbers are contradictory. Take a look at this. In one category, the GM-fed pigs appear to be less healthy, but in all other categories, the GM-fed pigs appear to be protected from inflammation. That part didn't make the headlines. They basically picked out the 5% of the data that made their point and ignored the 95% that either didn't make the point or actually contradicted it. So this is not incompetent science. This is very competent science where they're aiming to make a point and they will do anything to make it. So it's not like they didn't know what they were doing. They knew exactly what they were doing.
but anybody who bothered to look at it could catch it. Number three, Hawaiian papayas. Their future was grim in the mid-90s when a virus threatened to take out the crop completely. But scientists inserted a gene from the virus into papayas and the industry was saved. But false claims of threat caused by these crops led to the ban of GMOs on the Big Island. The ban follows an uproar in parts of Hawaii that depend on the GMO crops to survive. The bill ultimately passed with a grandfather clause which allows the papaya industry to keep functioning. But even that is going to be problematic because now that they've demonized genetically engineered foods, who's going to want to buy the genetically engineered papaya? And this is a very valuable product. And so it's going to be problematic for all the growers. And it's going to be a direct strike against their economic well-being. Number two, e-cigarettes. The concept is simple. It's a device that separates the nicotine from the actual smoke. We've documented this well in our recent publication on nicotine, that smokers smoke for the nicotine, but they die from the smoke. That fact is perhaps the biggest misconception about the devices, but it's also key in understanding the safety and efficacy of electronic cigarettes. The reasons why this is an important message is people have misconceptions about uh, nicotine and the various toxins in cigarettes and they get them mixed up. And We need to make the message clear that it's not the nicotine that's killing smokers, it's the smoke. And if we can give them the nicotine without the smoke, we'll probably be doing a great service. And finally, at number one, the battle over mosquito spraying. It hit home for action when a good friend and cancer survivor, Jim Capuano, nearly died last year after contracting the West Nile virus on Fire Island in New York. The problem, a ludicrous long-standing ban of mosquito spraying in one of the communities on Fire Island. Once AXA stepped in to explain that Anvil, a chemical effective in killing mosquitoes, is completely harmless to humans, the community came together and sought to allow mosquito spraying in the area. Josh being there uh, with his affiliation with AXA and, and his, his past history with you know toxicology, um, really drove the point home and really forced people to take it seriously because they're dealing with an expert and not just someone who read a few paragraphs online about you know anvil the spray that they use for mosquitoes and determined oh this must be safe i mean josh came equipped with documentation and we stood in the back after the meeting and and entertained anyone's conversation who came up to us and, and Josh was great. Had he not been there, I'm certain that the results would have been dramatically different. The rest of that summer we hear was delightfully mosquito-free. To read our entire publications on the health scares, you can head to our website, aksha.org. While you're there, don't forget to also sign up for our daily dose of news delivered right to your inbox. For Aksha, I'm Anna Smofska.